What's up everybody, it's Maxwell Ventura, Realtor here with the Disher Group in San Diego. And today we're talking about things to expect when purchasing real estate here in San Diego. And we're gonna use the acronym CAP, C-A-P. We've got closing costs, appraisals, and repairs coming up next. <laughs> Okay, so first, closing costs. How much are they and what do they consist of? So generally, and this is a moving target because it's gonna depend on what time of the month that you close and also what time of the year that you close because of the reoccurring um, and prepaid interest which will change and fluctuate. So generally, we say closing costs are about 2%, give or take, it can be a little more, a little less. Generally, the more that you spend, the higher price point, the closing cost percentage is gonna be a little bit lower. So for example, let's say on a million dollar property, I may actually say it's gonna be closer to 1.5%. So you can expect to pay about $15,000. Now, those closing costs, you've got recurring and non-recurring fees. Your recurring fees are your fees that recur over and over again. So if you've ever heard the acronym PITI, P-I-T-I, that stands for Principal Interest, Taxes, Insurance. The taxes and the insurance, the last two letters, are your recurring fees. Non-recurring are gonna be a whole host of one-time fees that'll be part of your closing costs. And you can expect lender, escrow, notary, and title fees, recording fees, things of that nature. And so number two is appraisal. Now with appraisal, that's obviously um, dependent on if you're financing or not, which the majority of people are. Of course, you can always order your own appraisal, uh, which is not as common, but you're gonna have to decide for that appraisal contingency, whether you're going to leave it as is. The standard timeline on the RPA here is 17 days. So are you gonna leave it as is? Are you going to shorten the timeline to strengthen your offer? Are you going to maybe include some sort of gap coverage or are you going to remove the appraisal contingency completely? The, uh, the gap coverage, you're telling the seller that if the appraisal comes in under your agreed upon purchase price, that you're willing to cover a certain amount up to the amount that you agreed upon. So uh, what's common, you may see that the buyer is willing to cover $5,000 if there's a gap up to whatever the agreed upon purchase price is. That's another way to strengthen your offer and obviously the best way to strengthen when it comes to the appraisal contingency is to remove it completely. So you're telling the seller that if there's any sort of gap whatsoever, it could be 5,000, it could be 50,000, it could be 200,000, that you are going to cover it, no questions asked. That's a great way to strengthen your offer other than just shortening the timeline is that one form of gap coverage or to remove the appraisal contingency completely. And then finally, we are talking about repair. Now repairs is going to be a part of the physical inspection due diligence contingency, which is also a, the standard is 17 days of the RPA. Now um, what's very common is you'll see that buyers are going to shorten that timeline um, to 10 days is something that you see very common. Sometimes it gets countered to even shorter. You see seven um, sometimes. But so essentially it's what you're going to want to do as soon as you get your offer accepted. That's one of the very first phone calls that we make is right to the inspector or inspectors. If you're having more than just a general, could be termite, could be foundation, could be roof, could be electrical specific uh, plumbing. You want to get in your inspectors right away because you're right. You're on the clock as soon as that offer gets accepted. So are you shortening your timelines or by removing the physical inspection due diligence clause completely? you're telling the seller that you are taking the home as is. Now, I tell my clients essentially all homes when they're initially purchased are really purchased as is from the get-go until we ask for something back once we're already in escrow. And that'll be through a form of the request for repair. So those are three things to uh, understand when you are purchasing a home. If you have any more questions about any of them, feel free to give me a buzz. I hope everyone's having a great Q4 here in 2021, and I will see you guys on the next video.